Welcome to my snowy ski weekend reading vlog. After driving over snowy roads through the mountains, we arrived at the cabin. It's 800 square feet and it has a full bath and two bedrooms, one of which has two sets of bunk beds in it. Right in the middle is this kitchen, dining area, and great room. Shortly after we arrived, we experienced a snow squall and I thought this is the perfect time to start reading. And just like any good bookworm, I brought way too many books for the amount of time that I had. So I grabbed a cup of tea and started with The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The premise of this romance slash thriller is that our main character, Avery Kylie Graham's out of nowhere is told that she is the heiress to a billionaire's fortune. The only catch to it is that she has to live in the Hawthorne house, which is the house that this billionaire built, and his family for one year. This billionaire's family consists of four of his grandsons, Nash, Grayson, Jameson, and Xander. It seems to be compared to The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin, which won the 1979 Newbery Medal. Aside from having to complete riddles and puzzles, the connection stops there for me. The Inheritance Games is way better. The main caution, though, in reading this is it's not just a puzzle riddle book. There's also quite a bit of a love triangle romance going on. After all, this is a YA novel. After making lunch and after the snow squall had passed through, I decided to start my next book. I chose Shadow Spell by Nora Roberts. Shadow Spell is the second book in the Cousins O'Dwyer trilogy. Each of these books focuses on one male and one female of a group of six. So each book focuses on one couple. I read the first book in the fall because the magic and witches theme seemed so atmospheric, but I quickly remembered that Nora Roberts is a love story writer, and so I decided to save the last two in the trilogy for February. The ending is, of course, predictable because it is the second book in a trilogy, so you have a need for the third book. The ending was very similar to the first book. There is a lot of world building as each of these books progress, and in this second book, she introduces the time travel capability of these witches. The next morning, we decided to brave the frigid temps and go skiing. After skiing for the morning, I was pretty beat, so I decided to go ahead and relax and start the third book in the Cousins O'Dwyer trilogy by Nora Roberts called Blood Magic. In this final book in the trilogy, we finally get to the romance between the two most powerful and impactful members of this group of six, and Nora Roberts adds to the world building by adding in a flying capability where you can't see them fly, but they're able to move across the world at will. The ending was as expected, but overall a very satisfying trilogy.
Next, I read I'd Tell You I'd Love You, But Then I'd Have to Kill You by Allie Carter. Allie Carter also wrote the Winterborn series, which is a more middle grade level book series, which is phenomenal. This is a young adult level book. This is a series of books set at the Gallagher Girls Academy, which is a school to make spies out of these girls. Main character is Cammy, whose mother is the headmistress of this spy school and whose father is missing in action behind espionage lines. Through a series of events, Cammie, who normally is unseen by the world, her nickname is Chameleon, she is noticed by a boy in town. And this story is their juvenile love story. This wasn't my favorite read. I kind of knew that going into it, but I did want to give this a chance since I did like the Winterborn series so much. But this was a pass for me, and I will not be reading any more of this series. Last book that I finished was an audiobook that we are listening to as a family. We listened to it on the way home and finished it, and that is Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. Can't recommend this high enough. It is a fun family read. He took off running for the closest spiral staircase up to the second floor. As he ascended the steps two at a time, he saw Kyle Keeley and his entire entourage running down a staircase from the third floor. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.